And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildred, and with me I have two returning good brothers to the temple, coming to us all the way from open-ended games. We have, I'm not, I'm not going to try and pronounce it this time, Max Cacristi and Nicola Segol, Segolini. Segolini, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got closer this time. Very close. <laughs> um, and we are going to be... D- we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Something that is a case of probably the best or worst idea I've, I've had here in the temple. So, a while back on the on the um, forums for the Morkborg community, um, there's, been, there's been a bit of a thing known as album crawls. The short version is, ju- is just creating a dungeon crawl um, using... The song, using the track list from a get from a given music album, typically a metal album, because well, this is Mork Borg. And then I thought, wait a minute, there's another game that that I have that I have in my arsenal that is all that is all about that is all about fantasy and metal. So, <laughs> so I contacted Max about it, saying, what would you feel about trying to about trying to set up album crawls? And and Max. In the in a moment of either genius or insanity, um, ch- they're, they're often close. So they may say too. They go well, hand in hand. Well, it's the reason the Gamma Ray song is called "Insanity and Genius." <laughs> yep. Deci- decided to green decided to green light the project and and managed. I guess you managed to rope ne- rope Neek into into assisting on this. Yes, I, I initially I, I didn't tell him exactly what he was going was getting himself into because yeah, the yeah. the great part about this is that Nick uh, knows uh, basically nothing about metal. He, he is <laughs> not a metalhead, so I, I tricked him into into this project. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's, it's, it's even more uh, silly the the idea this way, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, sure, sure. the big part of the the big part of the project is that for the, for those who are familiar with an early episode of Geek Watch where I did something like this when it came to adapting um, anime into t- into tabletop, I a- I asked both Max and Nico to pick an to pick an album, and up until up until the di- up until the Day where where this was getting set up, um, do not t- do not tell me that album, and do not tell each and do not tell each other the album because I didn't want to have my my assessment tainted, as it were. And oh, and all three all, and both all three of us um pick. Picked an album, kept kept it kept it secret up until up until we up until just before we started, and we and we'll be using the track list from these respective albums to Im- to improvise the given du- the given dungeons. Although my definition of dungeon in this regard is very loose because. Not ev- not every fantasy campaign needs to be set up in a du- in a dungeon, and I'd argue, in a lot of ca- in a lot of cases, you can still have a dungeon while having it outdoors. Because, well, you can't you can't exactly have the Battle of Five Armies underground, can you? No. Right. Well, it will be very difficult to to pull out, I think. No, and it would probably look like the world's largest bar fight. <laughs> Although that's not exactly a terrible idea, so I'll keep keep that one down for later. <laughs> so I'll I'll start. W- so the the album that I'll start with for, first is um is the one that Nico picked, and he picked Appetite for Destruction from Guns N' Roses. Um, yes. Going with going with the classics, I see. 
Yeah. And that's the boot album from a band. Mm-hmm. And when I when it comes, this also means that there are twelve that we have twelve tracks to work to work with. Um. Now, as far now as far as as far as how to how to stru- how to structure this, um. I am think I am think this the interesting thing about the about this one and one of, and one of the other albums we'll be tackling is that they that they ha that because of the fact that it was on vinyl you've got a you got a two sider approach in yeah. in this case the G side and the R side because well everybody mm-hmm. everybody's got to th- everybody's got to work their gimmick yeah. Um. So I'm think I'm thinking of I'm thinking of splitting it into I'm thinking of splitting this instance into a episode one and episode two of this particular crawl. Okay. Um. So we'll start with the we'll start with the G side and the fir- and the first section that we have is Welcome to the Jungle, which if that's if that's not the perfect. Way to introduce a dungeon. I don't know what is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, especially since you look at a you look at a lot of modules and a lot of them um, have have very very British or very Eastern Euro very um, not Eastern but very Western European um, approaches to the kind of environment that we have to work with. Yeah. So. With some, when there's pl- when there's plenty of other threatening environments for fa- for fantasy gaming, and the idea yeah, of yeah. using a for this case, I say I say we ha- I say we t- we take this a bit li- we take this a bit literal, the welcome to the jungle par- part of it, which is going to be our which is going to be our overture for this dungeon, is setting this is setting the stage. So, what? Yeah. So what I'm thinking. Go- this is going to be something like uh, the the island of terror, like uh, mm-hmm. it, it's set in a, in some tropical, uh, yeah, trop- yeah, uh, tropical jungle, basically. Yeah. What I'm thi- what I'm thinking is the way. I know that there's the cliche about you about everybody meeting in a tavern, but. I'm leaning into that and and going that the adve- the adventurers in this case had heard had heard about a island island off the coast that just appeared out of that just appeared out of nowhere after disappearing for fifty years. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah, I like that. Like the the island had fifty years ago. The island mysteriously disappeared. Now it's be- now it's back. Although. Although um, not not everybody believes that the island is back because it just sounds like another tall tale coming from sailors. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's basically uh, <clears throat> go and and check out if if this if this uh, island really cool. came back and what yeah. happened to it's it's kind of like the um, that's this this sci-fi mu- uh, movie. Don't know if uh, how was that called? You know, it's uh, where are we going? We don't need eyes. Uh, um, event Horizon. Yeah, no? Event, it's, event it's Horizon. Of, yeah, yeah, it's it's something like that. Now, for what this this spaceship that disappeared and then reappeared, mm-hmm. and then and they are going to investigate to 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 see what what happened. Yeah. If I remember correctly. It's pretty kind much of like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, cool. we, now, as far as as far as what sort of encounters one would expect in this <laughs> per, on this particular island, I would I would say keep I would say keep it se- keep it semi abnormal, like the wor- mostly just um dire versions of natural wildlife. So, if you want an excuse to use dire crabs or 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 giant or giant mosquitoes, this would be the spot to do it. Um, 
I'd say po I'd say possibly possibly use some use some variety of a of large large um birds, not birds of prey, but but like say a large parakeet or something like that. Yeah. Awesome. Even like um, giant hummingbird. Mm -hmm. That that would basically be. Uh, stirs, you know, like that, that drink your blood and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, the next track in next track in there is "It's So Easy," which is a which I'd say I'd say this I'd say with this one, you might have you. What comes to mind? What comes to mind with that is get is going to is going to have the a big amount of variance because there's not because there's not a whole lot of evocative imagery with that. I'd go I'd go with it I'd go with it being um almost the um almost the ru the do the whole um cliche of the of the temple ruins that can that can still be used as a makeshift camp. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> it, or, or it might also be something that uh um uh, lowers the 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 charters into Thinking it's it's easy, it's safe, like the like does this whole uh, camp uh, yeah. that seems appears to be just set up for for them. Yeah, yeah, so, something something like it seems it seems something very easy, but in reality, it's something that yeah. is going to be very practical for the players. Mm -hmm. so um, possibly, yeah. possibly it's a trap. Yep. Or or an ambush. I can certainly go with that. And as as far as far it could as... be, it could be also what the enemy says when he sees <laughs> the player. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be easy to get them. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I've tried I've tried to reduce my player's paranoia by saying the room seems empty, and that didn't exactly help. <laughs> it usually does be the opposite. <laughs> mm. Oh. Yeah. Now, as far as far as what as far as what could be laying the trap, um, given that we're given that we're dealing with a disappeared island, let's go let's go with something simple: cannibals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That even it's the classic trope, you know, mm -hmm. the, the the cannibals that in, invite you to dinner only when you get there you discover you you're supposed to be the dinner. The dinner. Yeah, I mean, we're de we're dealing we're dealing with people who've been who've been cut off from the world for de for decades, and that and now a f and now a handful of pe people from the outside come come to come to the place. That's going to seem like a um. Look, isolation does things to people. <laughs> yeah, like long yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, now night train that one might that one might be a bit um a bit tricky. Simply because we're de up until this point, we've set up a fantasy island, and yeah. um, unless you read the the word "train" as training, <laughs> not that in the night that they, you know, or, or, or it could be, um, you know, something like uh, the, uh, the rails you have in in mines, mm -hmm. you know, where. where it's, not oh, train, yeah. but it could be something yeah. like that. Yeah, like uh, like uh, like an empty, um, like an empty uh, cart from a mine, yeah. and uh, that could be the train. You know, uh, yeah, airboat disappear disappears in, in, in into, into them. darkness, in, into, yeah. into the dark yeah. underground. So yeah, I can I can go to the that. night. So they. <laughs> They'd f the party would the party would find a um a mine uh, underneath the temple or something like that an access to a mine or like yeah a, yeah which like does, underground uh, yeah does lead into into the next track which is out to get me um yeah. I'd say this would be another case of being able to do a a good old fashioned creature feature in this case um. Some some kind of some kind of some kind of monster that 
um, loves to loves to hide in shadows, quite literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. Um, and I tell you that the the, the the they heard noises mm -hmm. of this monster, and they couldn't figure out what it is, so they run away with this night train, <laughs> call yeah. like that. Yeah, like, uh, okay. and then the, the the monster starts to follow them, and they find out that it's a, like a big brown golem. Yeah, and uh, so <laughs> they call him Mr. <laughs> Brownstone. <laughs> 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 they call it. They, they, they call him Mr. Brownstone. They, 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 it could be two different things, though. I, I yeah. can see the the monster hiding the shadow, no, and and and, and you know, call, calling each other like like chittering or something skulking in, in darkness yeah and and, and the, the the heroes the characters are are, are chased away uh, mm -hmm. uh, and their their flight could well uh could well lead them to this mr brownstone this, mm -hmm. yeah could, could be a column could be yeah i feel, I feel like a, a golem you know uh, and the, the bard in the in the in the yes yeah, so kind in the of group uh, uh, comes out uh, with his name, you know, Mr. Brownstone. Huge, uh, huge guardian, like. Uh, some... And then they manage to escape mm -hmm. the the golem, um, and uh, they run through caves, and uh, they kind of lost their way. But they, you know, escape and they found a way to go up uh, from the underground, and they find themselves this beautiful, forgotten city, very like, you know, Inca, Aztec kind of feel, like mm -hmm. some of the El Dorado, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you get your Paradise City <laughs> track. And Paradise it's... City. I'd say I'd say that I'd say that would be that would be the ideal spot to actually do a full on confrontation with Mr. Brownstone as a as either a golem or a or a group of um golems. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, a classic guardians of the hidden city, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we don't have to go by we don't have to go in the order of the track, right? We can uh, kind of switch them or have to be um there is a room. We don't. We don't have to go. We don't have to go by tr by track order. I was sim I was simply using the um the two uh, the two okay. sides on the album to kind of. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So this is perfect. They they get to, to Paradise City, as they call it, mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Brownstone. It's uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's the Guardian or, or the Guardians. Yeah. The, yeah, more than one common golem. It could be also instead of it could be also a golem that. You know, one of those golems that doesn't attack immediately, but it has more like riddles, kind of like the Sphinx, mm -hmm. kind of like that. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, he calls himself Mr. Brownstone because his golem has a sense of humor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's... Um, okay. But this is how you know the people, the local, the local. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> so I think oh, yeah. it's going well so far. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. It's very interesting what is coming out. Um, now when it now when it comes to the when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the other side, um, I'd say I'd say that I'd say the tr the tracks on the R side should be more of the um, consequences of br of bringing stuff back from from this island from pa from Paradise City. Okay. Um. And specifically focusing on the um, the sailor who st who started the whole story to begin with. Mm -hmm. Um. Name. Namely, that he he was, because the first the first track on the R si on the R side of the album is my Michelle. So, mm -hmm. I guess the the best way I can think of on how to on how to utilize that is. The sailor who 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 initially tip, who initially tipped everyone off to the to the island coming back, um, had it was not entirely honest about what about why he was spreading that story, um. That he 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 had he had told this he had told the story beca because um. 
it because um he whether whether you want to because um, someone he knew named Michelle was on was on that island when it disappeared and he and mm. uh, he wanted to find her. Yeah, but, but okay, yeah. But he's been but he's been waiting fifty years, so he's he's in no he's in no condition to go to the island himself. Yeah. Um. So um. So maybe uh, they they discovered something about mm -hmm. this this Michelle. When, when they get yeah. there in, in Paradise City. Mm -hmm. So let me let me say that maybe um, when the sailor was, you know, sailing the ocean, the reason why he can't go back there uh, is because his his um, boat, his ship that he was on, just was called the Rocket Queen. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of got lost. Oh God, insane. Um, for, uh, yeah. Okay. So the rocket queen. Rocket queen is the name of the of the, the ship. The ship. Yeah, but uh, uh, and I wasn't decided between giving the ship the name Rocket Queen or Sweet Child of Mine. I would have liked that too. They call it Sweet Child. The, the name of the word is Sweet Child, and he said that's Sweet Child of Mine. But mm -hmm. yeah. I like Rocket Queen as a, I think Rocket Queen fits better for a boat. Yeah, for a ship. Uh, about you as well. It's maybe that well, maybe there's something to think about the about the sailor. Maybe this Michelle, once they found her, once they find her, uh, maybe he he she she doesn't think too too kindly about this, this sailor. She thinks that probably she he abandoned her for her uh, they could have a. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So maybe it's because kind of, of kind of reason, you know, mm -hmm. he, he left her on the island. And maybe, and maybe she uh, she's in prison now, and uh, he she writes his name all over the wall as a revenge, and um, it, she mm -hmm. she writes his name and said, "I think about you after time he's under." Mm -hmm. Every time he should write his name. So. Yeah, well, yeah. But they, they could, you could, but maybe the, the the charter could could find the name of the of the sailor written on the walls of the of this, this paradise city as they proceed and get and get into it. Mm -hmm. It become more and more frequent, kind of something like become more and more creepy. Yeah. yeah. Because, I like it actually. Yeah. Um, I like what it's going. Now, I'd say. Yeah, now, now I want to make. A, I want to write an adventure and a module about. Now, uh, city. <laughs> given how, given how, I would, I would say that. Oh, the the motif that's off that's often seen whenever we have whenever we have some, um, almost idyllic, almost idyllic city within within. A given setting is that there is that there's some sort of trap, and given yeah. how we we kind of we kind of established that going in going into the place they were dealing with a dealing with creatures that li that like to hide in hide in shadows and live in pe and live literally in pe in the shadows of people or um things. I I would like to take that approach and go full circle with it. The re that. That Michelle, Michelle, um, unbeknown, unbeknownstly was um, was her shadow was be was playing a host to one of these creatures, so. Oh. Be and being it being in there being in that place for so long that's part of the reason why ever, why the people on the island ended up going crazy because, when someone's playing a host to to that they end up it ends up finding ways to nudge. Um, that person's negative emotions, you know, fear, fear, pe fear, paranoia, all all that kind of stuff, and that and that's what made that's what made the inhabit that's what made the inhabitants of the island go nuts. Yeah. Mm. So you it's you're crazy, mm -hmm. basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I. I... I think that the sweet child of mine shouldn't shouldn't be that sweet. It's probably 
something twisted related to related to this shadow um something that this Michelle probably treats like uh, like a child treats like her child but mm-hmm. it's probably uh, a horrid creature made of shadow oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. control her basically yeah yeah so that's that's the, the, the final final discovery basically of the heroes mm-hmm. when when they get to the, to the center of a city where that's this uh, shadow creature that controls the mind of the one who mm-hmm. are supposed to, to save and at that point I think anything goes really yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's and yeah this advent this adventure definitely le- definitely leans a little bit into the into the horror end of things but I wouldn't necessarily say that the that the adventure we've structured here is a is a straight up horror one more a, no, no. um an extent an extended mystery yes but not necessarily horror um mm-hmm. No, and... it's either some like uh, heart of darkness elements for possibly some uh, you know the, the starts uh, pretty normal and as you proceed it becomes darker and darker but yeah mm-hmm. not 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 completely uh, on horror no. although at the very at the very least running it isn't going to be as much of a shit show as running um as as the filming of apocalypse now no <laughs> <laughs> Or 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 just or just as terribly, the island of Doctor Moreau. Mm-hmm. Funny yeah. enough, funny enough, both of them involve Marlon Brando. Seems to be a pattern there. <laughs> Could be, yeah. But I'd say I'd say that I'd say that's a um, that's definitely a, that's definitely a good start for for the for this kind of approach. Um, yeah, I like. I I played this adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to write it. I want to make a, the the against Dark Master one now about this. If you if if as far as how I'd tie something like this into into against the Dark Master, um, it could be argued that the sh- that the um shadow demons in this um were one of the Dark Master's experiments. Yeah, could be. A, lo- a long abandoned ex- a long abandoned experiment but still an experiment yeah, something that just awaits to be discovered by a foolish mortal no? and a few diabolic laughter yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> the although when it com- when it comes to much l- i've al- i've always held i've always held the belief that um when it comes to the concept of the dark master just like the concept of the demon lord in shadow of the demon lord um every every table's interpretation of the dark master should be different yes that's supposed to be to be different that's mm-hmm. great. We, it's supposed to be everyone should be uh should customize the master for the, the dark peers. master very warm and very combined uh, and also very uh, what what they think they it, it should it should be mm-hmm. so there's the snow that that's why we didn't give one one dark master yeah yep. now next it next is the is the album that you, the album that you had su- that you had suggested, Max. Okay. So it's "Rust in Peace" mm-hmm. by Megadeth. Yep. One of my favorite albums. Mm-hmm. Got my CDs here. I'm not reading the tracks right yep. from them because I got CDs. No, I'm that old. No. I listen to them in my <laughs> CD player. <laughs> now, um, for th- for this. When it com- when it comes to when it comes to the tracks available, um, we do have we do have a s- we do have a side one and side two, but I'm I'm going to 
I'm going to t I'm going to do a little bit of a spin on the on this, and throw in the track that was originally exclusive to the to the Korean edition. Okay. Um, Breakpoint. I so, I'm not sure I, I ever listened to that track, but yeah, yeah. Let, let's 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 throw it in. Well, the big reason that I want to throw that in is that otherwise we'd have we'd have not we'd have nine tracks to work with, and by throwing that in, we've okay. got ten. We've we've yeah, got makes ten. Sense. Um, makes sense. Yeah. And as a bit as a bit of an aside, as a as a completionist, it always annoys me when there's the when there's extra tracks solely for um, certain <laughs> regions. Yeah, it's usually in the Japanese edition, right? But I mean, I know why. I know why it's. I know why it's done. But that's. But that doesn't mean I have to. That doesn't mean I have to like it. No. Um. And just, just like, just like the previous one, we'll do. We'll um. We'll do. We'll do this as. We'll do this as a kind of A and B. A, a and B side approach. And. For and um. First off. What what comes to mind when it comes to, I know with with Appet with appetite for destruction we set we set it on a um on an island. What sort of set what sort of setup were you think were you thinking when it came to the side the side one part of um Rust in Peace? Well, Rust in Peace. Um... Well, I think that's that's an anger eighteen so. Could be, but there's also five magics, so it's it's gonna be something uh, either uh, I don't know uh, a weird mix of science fiction and fantasy, or or maybe just just straight straight up fantasy with some uh, some other elements, but in, in the background. You know mm -hmm. something like, but even even you know like uh, Shannara basically it's it's fantasy but it's set in in the distant future. But spoiler alert if you haven't haven't read it. But sorry, <laughs> but yeah. So so yeah, it could be just could be just uh, fantasy, but uh, with some uh, slight. Um, Sci-fi element in it, mm -hmm. possibly. Sort sort of like um, expedition to the barrier peaks. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Maybe, maybe a little more um, uh, subtle than that. But yeah, I I think it will it will work. Like yeah. Um. Now taking th taking that into ac into account, um, so the f the f I'd say I'd say the f I'd say the um for I'd say the opening structure that we can use is um hangar eighteen. The yeah. I the idea being um. This is a this is a this is this is a place that I that I could see someone stumbling on in a um he, in a hex crawl. Um this uh, this um be, the remains of this the remains of this um of this base for some for yeah. some sort of it, what would be considered a advanced military by our standards but is com it since we're since this is essentially taking a sci taking sci-fi stuff and putting it smack dab in a fantasy setting, it's completely alien to the party. Yeah, it's something pretty weird, like some uh, some huge abandoned fortress with like steel walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really, and, and you know what the the first track, Holy Wars, the punishment due to this. This may be the the, the characters might may, may recognize this as a as a remain of an ancient uh, holy war that like fought uh, thousand 
a fear ago. Yeah. So this this is possibly one of the relics that uh, forgotten forbidden era. Mm-hmm. What com- what comes to mind for me, for me when I vi- when I visualize it is is the you have the remains of what would of if I if this was drawn it would look like a re- it would look like an old abandoned um, modern modern or even futuristic um, military base with that is yeah. just that is just littered with with um unused mechanized equipment um and as far as and so far and that might that might pose the question of why why don't the players loot it the problem is um you're dealing with a lot of equipment that nobody has the faintest clue how to use yeah yeah that's true true for too many they, they just they just seem like scraps of metal for the mm-hmm. most part but they, they don't don't really know what what they are what what they're for yeah and given 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 holy wars the punishment due one of the things that's coming to mind is that is this place littered with um what lo- what looks of what are literally robotic knights that are that yeah. have fa- that have fallen into complete disrepair yeah yeah and uh, and, and that, that's lead us to track number three that's take no prisoners mm-hmm. and I think that this is what could happen when some of these, you know, robotic knights are activated when when the when the characters enter the, the dungeon, right? It's kind of uh, um, yeah, an alarm or something goes off, and they just activate and uh, and they they just try to go for the kill. They they're, they're not going to take prisoners, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this uh, cyber knights are, are, are relentless? They're gonna stop uh, for nothing. And something that I'd probably make clear with with these kind of knights is that even though they even though they're still a threat, they're st- they're significantly weaker than they could have been. Oh, of course, yeah. If, if, if the if the characters uh, fought them when when they're at, at peak. Uh, they, they would have been slaughtered, but now mm-hmm. they're all like rusty and uh, health power down. So they, they're, they're some difficult threat, but they're not in, impossible. But mm-hmm. I, I, I think this is going, going to be probably a, a mid high level dungeon. No, no, not something you want to stumble upon when you're first level, but I think this is for. Character a bit uh, higher up in levels, not not epic levels, but some mm. middle ground, boss. Yeah. Now, the 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 last track on this is is prob is probably the trickiest, and that is five magics. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a couple ways I, there's a couple ways I can put it. Mm. One of them is. The whole idea that that it, that within the base um, re- remnants of of the ma- of the magic that was used to power the, this kind of technology is found, or the or um there's st- or there's still a there's still some sort of a- there's still some sort of um ancient mage or ancient mage equipment that's still there, that's still in the base. Like like five magic items. Yeah, we're thinking something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, or, or it it could be also um, some kind of way to uh, go deeper into a base. You know, the the, the doors that that lead deeper in uh, may be unlocked only by the use of five different magic or, or, or of these five magic items I find in the base are basically keys and it is it is temp it is tempting to to um have the have these five magic items be th- be themed around the um be themed around five elements yeah i i think wait, wait i think i think the 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 lyrics of the song actually actually name name what, what the elements are that way 
Shut up, huh? Life magic. Yeah, it's give me alchemy, wizardry, sorcery, thermatology, electricity. Yeah, you have per kind of yeah. hot ball here. That's the random, uh, random mm -hmm. magic dice. But yeah, you know. Um, let's see. Al alchemy, wizardry, sorcery, um, thermatology, and and electricity. Um, given the, given the, given the, given those, um, yeah, you could, you could, you could, um, you could make five magic items themed, themed around that. Um, and of course with alchemy, you could make the, you could make the obvious someone, someone made a pseudo philosopher's stone. Yeah. Not a true, not a true one, but a, f but a, but one that got close. Yeah, and then complete, kind of like in, you know, the um, full metal alchemist. You know, mm -hmm. I'd say, I'd say, I'd say in this, I'd say in this case, the stone, the stone only re only represented the um, first step, that being Negrito. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as far as as far as wizardry, um, I'd probably I'd probably go with a um. With a step, with a staff, yeah, uh, some, some, yeah. Some, some sort of high, some sort of high tech staff that it that would normally be used by um, by ma by mage soldiers. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as far as um sorcery, I'd say the the item in that case would be an would be an orb, some sort some a literal orb of a different color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can be used as a focus yep. to, for to, to cast spells, so um, something like a plant. Yeah, as far as as far as th as far as um thermatology, there's thermatology. two <laughs> there's two there's two ways I could see it. One, um, something uh, that allows that allows the control of temperature, um, literal fire and ice, or two, um. Some reference to thaumaturgy. I'll well, I, I go with the with the heat controlling. So it could be even 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 be some kind of glorified uh, flame tower, you know, some like a wand of fireball or something like that. Uh, something that uh, exudes. Uh, uh, I'm uh, thinking. I'm thinking instead of go of um. Of going with of going with a um, going going with some going with a um a instead instead of a wand of fireball going with a pair a pair of a pair of gloves that can that can um that can cool that can cool or heat things down that they touch. I yeah. will I will admit I'm slightly taking notes from um her from the from some of the crazy magic items in the in the heretic games. Heretic and um, Hexen. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought of exactly those. Uh, those are like the first weapon. No? You you got the mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the the countless that that, that yeah shoot mm -hmm. that that uh, yeah yeah they were cool. Mm -hmm. They're they're approved. I want those. <laughs> <laughs> and as far and as far as as far as the last one, elec electricity, um. That that is the ca that is the case where, where the uh, magic item is a, is a case of a Clark's Law take on a magic item. Just have it be a friggin' railgun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. It's, it's called a, five magic, and they just throw randomly electricity in, in them. A because, yeah. A ra a railgun that, ha and because of the fact that I love. Giving my players wet weapons that are powerful but wildly unsafe, um, a railgun with a, with a lot of recoil, and by a lot I mean um. Do any of you do any do either of you remember the noisy cricket from Men in Black? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that kind of violent recoil, the kind where oh. firing it once, you're gonna get knocked on your ass tw twenty yards. Yeah. 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 
Now, just to yeah. make sure that's, that people don't use use this weapon any more than they absolutely need to. Yeah, but uh, what what the, what's needed to uh, you know cross the threshold to mm -hmm. to the deeper yeah deepest part of the dungeon. And that does br that does bring the um, to these to the second end of things now. I'd say I'd say as they as they go as they go deeper as they go deeper in um so um the underground part the underground part of the ba of the base the first thing that they first thing that they find is essentially the what the remains of a uh, of a combat arena you know where where soldiers might get trained but because of the fact that we're dealing with te with dealing with tech that's becoming that's becoming active by the players by the um party's presence um they have to deal with simulations of what of what the what this um base would fight back in those days mm -hmm. that's how i'd integrate some that's how i'd integrate a track like breakpoint yeah that's that that's cool yeah um um so but we're basically in the x-man simulation room yeah the danger room the danger room yes mm -hmm. Um, and as far as far, I would I would say that the um, that some that the the ro the robotic knights that that people have seen the um as they go as they go deeper in that it's revealed that those are what's referred to as the dawn patrol, i.e. Mm -hmm. i.e. the ones that they saw up on the surface were just scouts. Yeah, yeah. that are uh, mm -hmm. meaner and and. Fully powered. After all, they they got the ride gun down now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I I think also uh, mm, the danger room could could explain some tracks like poison was the cure, mm -hmm. which you know there's different simulation each time. You have, uh, uh, they give you a test, and each test has a solution. And in this case, you're they're like uh, they must choose possibly uh, different different substances. Mm -hmm. Where uh, there's like mm, poisonous gas that that they they will uh, them if they don't choose quickly, and they must choose the the correct one to to go on. And they uh, basically what what would be normally incredibly poisonous is what actually uh, act as an antidote to be to be poison per breathing so to to proceed they have to drink this this poison which mm -hmm. is obviously all the simulations it's not true it's a uh, central ae is is is, is uh, testing them mm -hmm. and this lucretia could be the uh, artificial intelligence at the center of the space that's been operative for uh, millennia, basically. Mm -hmm. Essentially, a ma essentially a Magitech version of a of an AI running the place. Yes, something like that. Yeah, I would, I would say to. to I would say that when it that um when it com when it comes to that because the only the only age, the the uh, tr we when it comes to how to represent the track tornado of souls I I would go I would go with the I would go with the idea that um the that um lucrezia the the um intelligence that's r that's r that's running the base and re and reactivating it um because of because of 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 the long amount of misuse even d even down d even down there um lucrezia is start is starting to de is starting to deal with 
the equivalent of um, rampancy that happens with smart AIs in Halo. Mm -hmm. Where they, because where um, what hap what happens with rampancy is, and I'm I'm vastly um, simplifying this. They end up accumulating too much knowledge, and their consciousness um, starts dividing amongst that amongst that pool of knowledge. Essentially, they think themselves to death. And the approach that I'm go that I'm going with is that, with because of how much time had passed and how much knowledge Lucrezia had accumulated. Um, Lucrezia has de has developed a split personality. Okay. There, there's oh, Lucre yeah. there's Lucrezia who is, who who, is is far is far more benevolent to the party and try and trying to help them understand and survive and survive, the more hostile elements of the base, and on the other end there's Polaris. Yeah, this a, a cold one. From, from from her name, yeah. She she's the yeah. <laughs> she's the killer. Yeah, yeah that like Pol Polaris still believes that the that the old holy wars are still go are still going on, even though everybody involved with those wars is long has been long dead, and is tr and because of the fact that it it believe that Polaris believes that the party is. The is essentially the same enemy that that Lucrezia fought against all the all those ages ago. It 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 is um it is prepping, it's it is prepping its own um. It's it's its own super weapon that it ha that it has down there, and that's where you'd integrate um tornado of souls. Yeah, it could, could be also a way to, uh, you know, power up. Of the armaments mm -hmm. of the base, so it's some, some sky kind of uh, magic tech weapon that, that cranes, drains souls to, yeah. to power itself. Yeah, oh. and then Polaris is going to activate it unless unless the heroes stop it. Mm -hmm. And I'd say I'd say how how to integrate something like Rust in Peace that would that would be. Um... Yeah, Set, setting yeah. up a setting up a kind of memorial for for the, for those for, so that anybody who passes by the space remem remembers what happened. Yeah, and maybe not going inside next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. But... Kind of like um like a system shock, uh, dance, you know, basically. Yeah, with, with the with the. Um, the eye guiding the, the characters that that was really cool i like mm -hmm. it and it's interesting that you mentioned you mentioned um system shock in that regard especially since um well these days it's a lot easier to play play the original thing thanks to the enhanced edition yeah. um still not sure what i think about the uh the remake being developed but it's being developed mm -hmm. by people who know what who know what they're doing I I I I was a baker of a remake back in uh, some years ago, and yeah, I, I hope they finally deliver it. Yeah, they'll uh, they'll deliver it before Star Citizen comes out. I can promise you that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I think the main delay is, uh, is because they they changed the the engine behind it uh, uh, while they were, they were developing so bad. Mm -hmm. They had to redo some stuff, but yeah, they shown some some demos. So yeah, so probably a work in progress. Yeah, yeah. Now this brings this brings us to the. Now I, I will admit when it comes to how what sort of be what sort of big bad evil guide I do with this sort of this sort of campaign, I'd probably go with um Pol Polaris. Um, possessing one of the large, one of the larger knights in the in this um base. Yeah. But, well, well, so something. Uh, if you if you want to set up set it up as a campaign, uh, Polaris probably has some kind of face safe, so it's some storage mm -hmm. where uh, 
uh, even if it's defeated, uh, some somewhere else it goes online, like a like a backup. Mm-hmm. And that that brings us to the album that I, that I ended up suggesting, which is a short which is a shorter album compared to the others. But I fig I figure with something like this. We've kind of, we kind of dipped into some horror some horror elements, as as one do, as one does with it with dungeon crawls. But I think with this pr- particular instance, this is the this is the point where we're going full going full in on horror would be um, justified, and that is scenes from hell from Psy. Yeah. Which... Cobra, I'm just watching it from. From the link, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Now the now, Psy is a very interesting <laughs> metal band. Um, they You can see that, yeah. They are they, they started out as black met as black metal. In fact, when they f- in fact they were the first black metal act outside of Europe to get to get to get signed. But. They are far more experimental than a lot than what one would expect from bl- from a black metal act. Um, heck, they're fir- they're, f- but they're the only band I know that is that has found a way to use a speaking spell as a musical instrument. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my own, the visualization I've always had with with scenes from hell is. A mixture of two things: one, um, Inferno, you know, from the Divine Comedy, and t- and two, the depiction of hell from Wayne Barlow. If you're familiar with that artist, let me check that. He's the... oh, okay, yeah. I I didn't remember the name, but I I've seen the the art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he Wayne Barlow was known for doing a whole doing a lot of concept art for for um science fiction, but I was first introduction introduced to him through his through his depiction of hell and it's definitely on the bizarre end of things. Mhm. Um and the the approach, the approach that uh, the approach that I'm considering go- going with this is, um, since the first track is called pre- is called Prelude to the Oracle. Um, I'm think I'm thinking that this that this pr- this particular um event this particular adventure is w- is one where is one where the setup is is not going to be SF. Or or semi horror exploration, but more but more of good old fashioned dream logic. Specifically, the par- the party and the party ends up um, meeting with a meeting with a fortune teller who ge- who gives them a a warning. And the entire adventure takes place while the party is asleep. Essentially, essentially, while they're asleep, they're in a they're in a vision of some of some kind of hell. Yeah, I get. So it's yeah, kind of a, a nightmare more than more than a dream, but yeah. Yeah. Um. Now. When now, now first. First off, I need to I need to I need to remind myself what. Um, Lamarts de de Mortier, um translates to. I think it's the art of dying, possibly. Yeah, the the art of dying. Appar- uh, I j- I just looked it up, and it's a bo- it's a book from um, Ambrose Perry. Okay. Which I ha- which I have not which I have not read. Nope. No. no. Okay, but 
the arts of dying it, it, it's cool to us that's the just just as a title it could be since this is uh, some kind of dreamscape mm-hmm. it could be um, some like med artist uh, uh, gallery when we with all these uh, paintings or possibly statues uh, that are um, a trap themselves like like you know penalty paintings that can uh trap the soul of those who uh who gaze upon them i ended or, up uh, i ended up going down a i ended up going down a bit of a um a bit of a rabbit a bit of a minor rabbit hole with it and i found fa- and i found a, a latin text called ars moriendi mm-hmm. um well it's which are two latin texts from the fifth from the um early to mid 15th century offering advice on the pr- protocols and procedures of a good death and okay. because of because of that the the um the the set the setup that I'm, that I'm having is that each tr- each track in the in this particular crawl is a different um is a is a different nightmare that they're experiencing each night um, the first night is is well more more about de- is de- is definitely on the side of um, death, and the place that the place that they're in is is a is a case of figuring out the it would be it would be one giant puzzle where the the way to the solution is to figure out the right way to die. <laughs> So, so those, dark, those, really ki- those kind those kind of those kind of GMs who lo- who love who love yeah. um who love t- who love um Tomb of Horrors it, and and um meat gr- and meat grinder kinds of kinds of campaigns. This this particular night is for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm Mildred, sorry to interrupt you, but I have to go, so I'm gonna leave you in the hands of Max. Uh, all right, all right, me. Nick. Um, stay stay frosty, man. You too. You too. Thank you for having me. Yep. Thank um, you for having us. Have a good day. Yep. So the no, there is there is apparently a long version and a sh- and a short version. Um. The but it consists of six chapters. The first. And I think I think each of these could be their own, could be their own little encounter. The first, um, it is that is on the on the fear of death. The second is on the te- on the uh, temptations. The third the third is um the is the questions to the, to ask the dying. The fourth is imit- imitating Christ's life. The fifth is fr- is friends and family, and the sixth. Is the prayers to be said? Those could those could be easily structured into their own separate encounters for the for this first night. Yeah, I <clears throat> I like it. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's, it's kind of uh, in some way it's kind of the a reverse approach to a uh, standard dungeon, no? That you normally uh, will try to avoid the traps, uh, avoid uh, avoid dying, basically. Mm-hmm. And in this in this particular, uh, which works out because it's it's all a dream after all, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Mm-hmm. Now this the third track is the, is the soul grave, which. I'd say I'd say that one. Um, the the uh, the approach that could be done with that is is setting that one entire entirely in a cemetery or a or a mausoleum. What with the with the with for that one the uh, and this I will admit would be tricky to implement mechanically, but for the dream with the soul with um soul grave. The part the party members are souls um 
possess possessing the possessing the bodies within 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 the area and jumping between them. Okay. This um interesting idea. Uh, so basically, they they jump to build soul jump uh, from grave to grave. Um, and they have to uh, go through a specific sequence, or, or find the the right grave to to go on. Yeah the the approach that the approach that I'm going with, and this is the this is the reason why it's I'd said it in a um in like in like a mausoleum is each each of the each of the there. When it when in this dream, they're effectively disembodied souls surrounded surrounded by bodies without them. Okay. But they but they can still possess the they can still possess the, some of those bodies, and use the, use that to in, to interact with the environment and figure out how to get out of the dream. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, kinda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> the the next track is the red funeral which um the the with it when the with the track on the album itself it opens it opens with a spoke with a spoken word section from da from david tibet who's t who's talking who's talking about who's the words seem a bit seem a bit nonsensical but definitely have certain imagery one of them being um, four horsemen trotting in it in eternal ledger, mm -hmm. and I'd say I'd say in this I'd say in this case this is where instead of do the first the first few encounters in this have been very puzzle centric. This would be the case where you do where you do a full on encounter in this case with these um horsemen. Yeah, can be um, like a, a kind of the horsemen of the apocalypse. I would I would say that these I don't want like I wouldn't want to go full on full hor four horsemen of the apocalypse but more of since since the refer since the since a eternal ledger is referred to I'd say that they have more in common with um go with ghost rider okay which so maybe they were um they are previous heroes but maybe that yeah that uh that failed mm hmm. Which, as a bit of a side, Ghost Rider is one, uh, was one of my favorite Marvel characters growing up. Yeah, I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, I next to nothing about Ghost Rider. The I, I, the thing I, 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 the the only the only thing I. Uh, I know. I I, I I I just watched the movie, which was terrible. Uh, I was on a uh, on a plane, I think, when I when I watched it. But yeah, that, the movie's that, that, the movie's that, bad, but it's um, it's an it's it's an entertaining kind of bad for me. Yeah, I mean, me made the the plane trip uh, less boring. So yeah. Well, it's a, well, it's a plane. Oh, <laughs> I, I couldn't go anywhere. I just <laughs> had to, <laughs> to watch something. Yeah, no. Uh, so I, I know next to nothing to return, but but yeah, I get the idea anyway. Now, when it comes now, when it comes, to, I would I would say when it comes to it, the um, the reason why I bring up why I bring them up is that the conflict in the, in this particular night is. Is is horsemen? The horsemen are there to essentially essentially try and collect the souls of the party. Mm -hmm. Um. And and of and of, co and of course, well, it's it's their soul. They don't want to give that up. So that's yeah, how, that's how you enough. use that to have yeah. essentially a well, essentially a mid moss fight. Um, yeah. Now, when you it comes to, to get possessive mm -hmm. about their soul. Yeah. When it comes to the next one, the the summer funeral, um I 
I think I think of the kind of imagery that's that's typically depicted with say the say the summer fae. Mm -hmm. And what what comes to mind for for this, and maybe maybe you have a different interpretation, is a a setup where, where um where the where the dream looks far more idyllic than some of the than some of the hellscapes that they've that they've seen but the but um one but but some but um for but for whatever re but for whatever reason um the the um people inside the people inside the dream either either don't either don't do anything just la just languish around or um or they or they end up just le just letting themselves die essentially they're ent they're entirely afflicted by sloth mm -hmm. you know because the because the area is so perfect why would they do anything yeah i'll find something like the uh, lotus eaters possibly mm -hmm. they probably but that's something that uh could uh, affect the, the player's characters too. Yeah. So if they stay too much, they'll they'll never they'll never leave. Mm -hmm. Now, the the next one, um, musica in temper in tempera belly, um. Is I be I believe is I I believe that's actually a reference to the um to the mass that was written by jo by Joseph Hayden. Um. And because because of the fact that it translates as um as ma as mass in a time of war. I would this would be a this would be a good opportunity to to kind of call back to some of the things we hint we hinted about in um in Holy Wars the Punishment Due. Where yeah. in that segment we saw the aftermath of one of these kind of battles. In with something like Musica and Tempera Belly, you're not seeing the aftermath, you're seeing the peak of it. Okay, so it's like a, a peak of that the past. Yeah, you're seeing you're you're essentially seeing a you're essentially seeing a a um a war right in right in the middle of it. Yeah, and like this would be the op this and because of the fact that we're up that we can operate dream logic with this kind of thing, this would be where you where you have um you can ha you can have the the si the sides in this conflict look more and more um absurd okay, in 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 what sense just that just that they they don't look they don't look as they don't look as humanoid one one might look like one might look like monsters that kind, oh, that okay. kind of thing yeah Yes, and maybe they were, uh, you know, maybe they were like the the perception of, of uh, what the enemy mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, the the humanization of the enemy during the war. So you, the character are perceiving what uh, the, the fighter thought they were fighting, mm -hmm. and, oh. and, may, and maybe getting. Uh, beyond this, this illusion could be a way to to uh, to get through this this part. Mm -hmm. Now, the ne the next um the next night in this case is um Venetus. Which Ven um Venetus is referred is 
is a is a kind of is a kind of paint is a kind of painting usually usually symbolic showing what's said, what's said as the transience of life the futility of pleasure and the certainty of death yeah um i i would probably the visuals that come to mind for me when it comes to vanitas is as an is an old is a is an old, is a king in is a king or or an emperor in his in his last days just w just waiting f with the with the sword of damocles over his head but if but um but he's not but he's not willing to give that up so this is this is the perfect spot to have a to have a second major encounter the first, the yeah. first one we had was with the four horsemen. This is a case of with a, um, with a king who is not who is not willing to accept that is that his reign is over. Nah. you could keep the, the hanging sword uh, like um, mm, uh, make make it a, a literal threat during the encounter. Something that like while they're fighting. Uh, Low get lower and lower, so they, yeah, you know, to uh, fight against time. So. Mm -hmm. I would now, in order to make in order to make it so that the so that the encounter doesn't doesn't revolve around him, doesn't end up with him, um, with the with the players just deciding to go full defensive and run the clock out. I'd probably, I'd probably house rule it that. The that as the clock gets closer and closer, the king's attacks get a lot stronger. Mm hmm Yeah. You know the because well, he, as the, as the end gets closer and closer, he gets more and more desperate to try and main, to try and maintain its position. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like it. So mm -hmm. also a very, I think it's a cool, cool, a very cool trick to set in in a fight. I think that there's, there's a few uh, RPGs, not like that, that do like that, like the Thirteen Age, because uh, as you each round, uh, but the the monsters and the characters deals more damage if I remember correctly. So yeah, it's. It's a cool, it's a good trick that mm -hmm. that can make um, a fight uh, really interesting. Yeah. And the last tr the last track on this is is of course scenes from hell, and I would I would say that I would say this would be the tr this would be the track to kind of kind of put a coda on the on the whole thing. Um. The idea, be the idea being, it being um, this would be this would be the only one that is not that is not um, that is not, that is not a dream, but rather, but rather um, taking taking pieces from e from each of the previous nights and putting them putting them together because, ov obviously, things that occur in dreams are. Exaggerations of things in reality, mm -hmm. and the so the final segment in this in this adventure would be Pete would be piecing the piecing together what the what the message in all in all of these is, and this is something that I th I think would be best left open ended so that GMs could inter could interpret that as a as a lead in to whatever they whatever they chose. Yeah. Yeah, I think it uh, works well that way. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, it's a uh, where do we go next? Yeah, kind of, kind of scenario. And yeah. you you could use that as as the as a prophecy of of what's to come, or so, or something, or something a little bit more nef more nefarious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it, and I'd I'd say th I'd say that's a I'd say that's a very good um that's a very good spread because we've had 
through this we've had three very di very different adventures um first was the first we have a um we have the good old island exploration um a a bit a bit of ma a bit of magitech and then a bit of um a bit of psychological yeah, very different really interesting mm -hmm. experience i would say yeah but I'd say I'd say I'd say the I'd say all three of them would make ver would make very good um, um, crawls or or um, campaigns. We are kind of stretching the idea of what of what's considered a crawl, but I'd I'd say it I'd say it works out all things considered. Yeah, yeah, at least better interesting adventure. Let's mm -hmm. say let's say better adventure. I I, I would definitely play all of them. Yeah. There are, Really interesting, but the, but I think I think the, I think that'll do it for this particular experiment. This was fun, and I'm, I get the feeling I'll be returning to this to this little thought experiment in the future. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's a great way to set up, uh, even even just for you know an evening. You, you mm -hmm. don't know where where to begin. You know, you you got game night coming. Just pick up an album. And read from there. It's really, it's really interesting. Thank yep. you, Mildred, for, uh, for um, I, I, I never thought about it before, but yeah, but it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And of course, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come up to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>